again, I think if you stick with certain principles, you're not gonna go there, or you're not gonna go as badly there. Now, when we went to Albany two weeks ago, where the governor tried to get us to move some cuts mid-year in the budget, you know, he said, I'm cutting everybody. And he proposed cuts in education. And in fact, people were up in arms about you can't cut school funding, period, or you can't step, cut school funding mid-year. And, and I actually agree, cutting school funding mid-year is a horrible thing to do in a school system. But he also said, and again, we never really look at the details and the press doesn't cover them that well. He also, when he, when he proposed his cuts, he proposed cuts to the districts that had negotiated um, higher dollars in the state budget last year than they actually should have been eligible for under the formula, the wealthy suburban districts. And he also proposed cuts to districts that had the largest surplus, because a lot of the school districts have been stuffed, not New York City actually, have been stuffing surplus monies into um, a pension plan where they're never gonna draw the money down. So the state controller did a study saying, well actually, the school districts have 400 million more than they need stuffed away as a surplus. So I would say, okay, we could take that. That would be okay. Um, but again, it's the devil's in the detail in budgets. Um, I would also say though, going back to um, the gentleman over here's point of view, if you really don't want to make the tough cuts, you have to be able to talk revenue. You have to talk about changing your tax policies and your tax funding stream. And you also have to make priorities in your government budget. I would be totally comfortable pretty much cutting all of the funds in New York State's budget for things we call economic development, because pretty much, as far as I can tell, none of them are working. So why would we keep spending money in ways that don't work? I see we've been joined. We've been joined by uh, Council Member Gail Brewer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, I guess uh, Council Member, we were just talking about the, uh, the budget, the state and city's budget, and the um, question was, you know, how, how should we prioritize? Where, you know, understanding, recognizing that we're in a, a crisis, at the same time a downturn, you know, what should be our priorities, and you know, how could we go about cuts, things like that? So maybe. You can offer your perspective from uh, the city level and what's been discussed in the council. What's going on right now in the city, it's like going to a funeral all day long. <laughs> uh, because we thought that once June 2008 happened and ended, that that would be the end of the budget for 2009. Because you know, it's a fiscal year um, from June until July. So we go in 2009 until July 1st when it starts 2010. So we thought it was over. And now, for the first time in history, we have budget hearings during the November mod or modification. It's a very strange experience to be going to. We're doing it all day today, all day yesterday, um, and then actually the day before. And we were there till I think seven or eight o'clock last night when the entire city council chamber was full because people had concerns and they have never come to talk about budget in November. Um, just to give an example of something that we listened to today uh, in a meeting is the issue of, and this is really pertinent to this Kruger's district too, many, many uh, synagogue churches provide shelter for people who are homeless. Some of you may have spent overnight time. I know Liz has and I have. So the long story short is the city's proposing a different plan for a request for proposal, which is really a budget cutting item so that the people who would go to these shelters, how they get there, instead of getting transportation, they'd have to take, as a mentally ill homeless person, a metro card, and to go to these shelters. And so that would be an example now. So then you say, I'm giving you the short version, but then you say, okay, as a responsible person, how well should we look at this uh, budget cut? If we need to cut, this large $3.9 million for transportation, for taking people in vans to the different uh, churches and synagogues in the city of New York, what's a better way? Well, what Liz and I would do, and I'm sure Brad would do, and surely Joe would do, is you sit down with the people who are most affected and you try to find a less expensive way because the transportation with these bus companies may not be the best way. But what you don't do, in my opinion, is you redo the whole process so you say we're no longer doing transportation, we're no longer providing linen, and oh, by the way, we're just gonna open this to request a proposal, so it could be 
any nonprofit, it doesn't have to be a church or synagogue. And oh, by the way, uh, we're not going to give you any funding as we did in the past. Because that eliminates every church and synagogue volunteer who was an advocate for the homeless, often providing jobs and so on. So I'm giving you a synopsis, but you do need to come up with an alternative. But the thing is, people don't often get asked. So that's what we're dealing with. Then, of course, you have okay, to the Department for the Aging, we're going to cut all the intergenerational, all the day uh, care programs for adults. Adult daycare means that you have issues, you can't take care of yourself, but you want to get out of the house during the day and participate in something that brings you back to life, it makes you feel good about yourself. That's gone. All intergenerational is gone. But I guess if we're being responsible, then you have to come up with alternatives. It's just really hard when you listen to a full day of high school students and seniors come talk about the deep impact, not just peripheral, not just surface, how this experience has changed their lives, and this has been going on for 20 some years. So these programs have perfected in the way that they do intergenerational. And to me, as somebody, it's really hard to throw this out and say, okay, we're not doing this anymore. So then the agency says, that's not a core service. That's the newest buzzword. So what's a core service? That means that you walk into the senior center, you get something to eat, whatever, in my opinion, the least expensive program. I don't know if it's bingo or whatever. At the same time, you're being told that you know the senior centers have to be more informative, more exciting. All of us baby boomers have to be excited about going. I'm never going. But <laughs> I'm not going to be a senior in a senior center. But I know some people like that. But I do know that some of them do need to be invigorating and different in their approach. But again, you got to listen to the people who are the users and the providers to find a new approach. Don't put out a request or proposal, which is also what we're facing, that says all of the senior centers may be closing. Don't scare the dickens out of people because you need more input. So I guess if I to answer Joe's question after like three days of this bombardment of cuts, 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 you really do feel that you need you, you do need to come up with something different. People are willing to do so. Could be on the revenue side. We just spent two hours with the MTA. We're not gonna have any crosstown buses if they let us in the evening. Now how do you get from East 68th Street to West 68th Street? I don't know if there's no cross-town bus. So again, uh, 20 no, 69 pages of cuts is what I got today, have it with me, from the MTA. And you, at the end, you're just, you're kind of like, what's left of our city? But then the question would be, what buildings can they sell? How are they pushing for the commuter tax? I thought that Bill Thompson's idea, the controller of taxing large automobiles, I don't have a car, so I thought that was a great idea. <laughs> the, bigger, the bigger the automobile, the more it gets taxed and that gets sent to the MTA. I thought that was a great idea. But when you talk to the MTA, they don't have all those ideas. They only have, this is the best case and the worst case scenario. So I guess this is the time for coming up with ideas that are innovative. And that is what we have to do. I don't know, I think the city is a little bit different. We have cut a lot. In other words, I don't know that we have programs that are totally ineffective. We have programs that are effective. It's hard to cut them. So the question is, cut some without taking the guts out of it. But really, are there any other revenue sources? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just, uh, you know, we only have about uh, eight minutes left or five minutes. Um, are there any other uh, questions that uh, anyone is dying to ask? But there, there are a lot of questions. So, well, you know, if, you, if we don't get to you, please feel free to call back and talk to the um, uh, panelists um, individually. So, are you going to raise your hand for one? Yeah. Just, we mentioned how um, how there used to be like um, there used to be a manufacturing business in New York, and then that changed, and then most of the economy was focused on the um, was focused on the housing and on the stock market. So I mean, and that sort of fell apart. But what exactly does the city produce? I mean, <laughs> what exactly like I mean, companies come in here to make money, but what are they doing when they're making money? Are they just like sitting here filling their fingers? I mean, they just doing nothing. That's right. I mean, we still have a pretty nice sort of specialty manufacturing. I mean, there was a time post World War II when New York had a mass production economy, and we made staplers and you know bottled beer. And 
what, what we do now, and, and that was lost as overseas labor was much less expensive than, uh, than New York City labor. But the last 10 or 15 or 20 years, most of it was left here in manufacturing has a 